definition so okay. i can understand what is a characteristics or what is a uh, uh, um, 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 the element of a val value set when i say it is a character or number only however i wanted to define yes i can do that but when for example the one that you created for all the uh, coe value value set is for uh, the value sets it it was all predominantly character validation and the subtype is text what is the significance of choosing there i say okay what kind of value that particular segment can carry right whether it is a numeric alpha numeric or a special character i can say that or um, uh, i say it can be dependent uh, or not but when there is a sub validation why is that it says text you always choose text right i forgot what are the other uh, uh, values in the uh, list of values so uh, what does it mean so you are talking about the uh, subset validation yeah the definition you have something called uh, i don't know whether that's yeah. a validation it's on something yeah. called a uh, value subset yeah yeah so so subset usually will not use it for a uh, chart of account so it's used mm -hmm. for different purpose so let's say <clears throat> you have uh, you have uh, 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 let's assume that you have a requirement that you want to call another subset from this uh, particular validation so that is when you will use it i mean i haven't used it practically but i know what is what and why it is used so basically okay. if, basically if you have a requirement so wherein uh, uh, you will call your uh, period let's say you are running for your uh, gl balance G gl balance suppose you will not run it with your this value set but if at all there is a non requirement wherein you wanted to take for a particular year let's say for 2020 to 23 so now if you want to take the report so what you can do is that you can create this as a subset or probably you you cannot derive this format of this uh, date range so wherein you can use this subset and uh, get your value set so that's the idea behind this uh, subset value validation but we will have to check because i haven't worked practically so i know only the theoretical part of it okay so okay fine got it so when there is at the when we create a value set at the definition validation level there is something called subset subset right, right. when we use right. that then it becomes a significant of using it otherwise when we whenever for chart of account validation where we create it we always most of the time we use character and once then when there is set a character we, it's a, the suggested option is to select it right. as a text okay got it and then um, the coe structure and the structure instance right um, yeah. when we um, call the coe structure and then we we uh, 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 for the uh, instance right structure instance right um, can i create multiple instance for the same coe structure yeah yes you can create okay got it so in that case uh, when there is like yesterday uh, there were a discussion i was uh, listening to it uh, a field called required where you need to go check this and then save it right all the segments that has been uh, called from the coe structure so th that point of time at the header level there's something called display and uh, okay. when and for each segment level you go say okay this segment is required this segment is required so yeah. what, uh, uh, what uh, i mean uh, uh, and it says enabled and then it says required so what is this, uh, i'm not able to call correlate okay at the header level it says enabled and then i come here and i say required or uh, disabled you mean to say when i call the coe structure i can eliminate uh, el uh, el um, eliminate a st so segment from here or it's a mandate that i have to pick up if i call a coe structure i should pick up all the segment available segment right in the instance i cannot uh, have a liberty to eliminate one particular segment isn't it so what is that at head level we say enable it so is that enabling it's at the whether the structure is is disabled or enabled for any other use or uh, yeah i believe uh, you are talking about the header information is what the coe structure level enabling uh, at the header level that you are referring mm -hmm. i think yeah yeah so so this is for the uh, instance whether i'm going to use this particular instance for my ledger or probably uh, I'll, i'll not use this 
a particular instance probably i have made some mistake while doing configuration or probably i i wanted to have this as an product brand project uh, account and the company segment so instead i have uh, created the other way so what i'll do is that i'll disable this so that you are referring to the uh, instance so this is one thing and the second thing is that disabling and enabling you can do it so that that's the uh, idea behind having one structure and having uh, multiple instances because if we don't have this option of uh, creating multiple instances so we will not have usage of uh, attaching or associating our chart of account structure with the instance so inst instead directly we would have uh, assigned uh, the chart of account structure itself so how we had an eba so similarly we could have done this so but the reason why we have is that uh, let's say you have uh, same thing let's say you have 10 segments so you wanted to use only the eight segments so mm -hmm. you will not enable the record and display it flag there so instead you will just leave that particular option so you will use only the eight segments instead of 10 segment so you we will have to if i say i say required for the segment level and then I, I say display is no. So it's uh, we've, it's a mandate that I have to pre-populate with the default value, right? Yeah, you will like, have to. Like we have yeah. something called future one, future two, feature three. So after right. five, six years, then it, uh, uh, it comes. Uh, so when you say display and require this instance, is it only for the BA intelligence or it is for the ledger level itself? No, but I don't think we can use uh, display only and not required so that will not work i think so no, no, i'm are... talking about no display required okay okay so, okay. so in that case the segment should have a pre-populated value right no like if it is zero not... zero or z, z something like that because no. this yeah so so if you want to populate zero zero instead of typing it every time or using the other option so simply you can give the default value. So let's say you, you have the value as 0, 0. So this is your default value. So you there you have an option called default value. So there you can mention this value. So you don't need to enter it every time. But this uh, option of enabling this flag is different. Okay, it is got it. you're not using this segment itself. OK, got it. OK, let me try once and I'll get back to you on this. Thanks, Arun. Yeah, sure. Um, Arun, uh, so yeah. contribution to the Dana's question, right? In which yeah. uh, scenario yes. we can have uh, multiple instances for, for one structure in uh, real time scenarios? In real time scenario, it's uh, basically uh, based on the requirement. So let's say you are implementing for uh, US and you are implementing for India. So India, probably you might have different uh, uh, reporting and different compliance requirements. And in US, you might have different uh, compliance requirement. OK, so now in this case, so there might be a requirement wherein uh, the US business also might be doing the construction business. So when they are doing construction business, so it's uh, the requirement that I have seen in few projects that they will ask for uh, the project segment. But whereas in India, they are not doing the uh, construction business. So the construction business is done only in US business scenario. Mm -hmm. So now the uh, the structure will change the chart of account structure instance that I use in uh, US and that I use in uh, India will differ. So what I'll do is that I'll create one uh, structure with a project, product, and the other segments as well. So now I will not enable this uh, project segment for my uh, India instance, India COA instance, okay. but I will enable this uh, segment called project for uh, my US uh, entities. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I uh, given the instance details in the message. Yeah, yeah thanks.
Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Any other uh, question, or I, I can start the class. Uh, Arun, I have questions. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. uh, in fusion, we have a three balancing segment, right? Right. In uh, what purpose uh, we will be using that? Uh, uh, when you say three balancing segment, it's it's primary, secondary, and third balancing segment that you're referring. I think. So the primary yes. balancing segment, you know, it's actually the balancing segment, which means your debit and credit will be equal. OK, so this is the normal traditional balancing segment that you will use. And when you will use your uh, secondary balancing segment is that in case of your uh, intercompany transactions. So here you have uh, the flexibility of using your uh, secondary balancing segment wherein you can add this as an additional attribute to determine your uh, the uh, balancing segment okay so let's take an example so i have an example that i have my first segment as an uh, ledger or my entity so let's say i have uh, five business okay so for each line of business i have this as in my primary balancing segment so now i have my branch segment so branch what i will do is that i'll take my trial balance with my branch segment okay so this is my uh, actual validation or actual way that i take my reports and i submit my reports okay so now what i will do is that i'll consider this as my uh, secondary balancing segment so now if i do any transaction between my branch one and branch two okay so what I wanted to do is that I wanted to do the intercompany transaction. So how I'm going to do this is that I have the uh, balancing rule that I'll draw. Uh, I'll write. Basically, it's an additional attribute that I will use to generate this uh, the uh, IoT entries. Basically, the intercompany entries. Okay, and uh, the third uh, balancing segment. So still you have an option, but I haven't seen any requirement to have it. So probably if there is a requirement to have this as a primary as an entity and your branch as a secondary balancing segment and your project as uh, let's say third balancing segment, you can have it. You have the option of using this, but in real time you will not use your uh, third balancing segment, but you have this option to use it. All three behaves the same way, which means your debit and credit should be equal. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Mainly it is for reporting, you say. Uh, not exactly uh, re uh, reporting. It's basically uh, behaves in the same manner how uh, this balancing segment will work. So you can use it for a uh, different purpose. So the one example that I gave is that so I am taking a uh, report based on my uh, branch segment. The trial balance is drawn based on my branch segment. But what is my primary uh, or the primary balancing segment is not the branch, but it is actually the uh, entity. So entity meaning line of business. So now I will use uh, this as an uh, information, the secondary balancing segment to generate my trial balance based on uh, the transaction that is done and also for the intercompany transactions. So now it is based on the uh, business requirement whether I wanted to. So the reporting is something that probably you can consider the third balancing segment as in reporting, but the second actually you will use in few scenarios. So, so one of my project also it is done based on this, this secondary balancing segment. So it's, it's the transactional based, but not the reporting. So probably you can uh, consider the third as in reporting part. Yeah, it also add like add on to what Arun, it depends upon whether the company at what level it wanted to see its uh, balance sheet, right? right. Uh, they Correct. can draw it. So that's where Correct. it becomes easier. Correct. Correct. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other question? <clears throat> One basic question actually, uh, clarification. Yeah. Uh, as per yesterday's uh, class, right, last uh, week's class, uh, yeah. there was all structure definition. Like uh, you have taken example of Tata Steel, Tata Cars, and Tata IT. So okay. I understand that each one we need to define it as a legal entity. Uh, okay. 
but uh, when it comes to the bu right uh, bu will be again tata steels only and the organization can be branch wise like uh, uh, bangalore business and uh, hyderabad business like that and departments will be it a uh, accounts payable receivables like that or how it works yeah so the uh, structure uh, the way that we will define is that so we have the uh, tata steel so tata steel is my uh, legal entity and for this legal entity i will have my uh, ledger that is tata steel okay so under this i have multiple branches mm -hmm. so each branches will be considered as separate uh, business unit so for example i have it in chennai i have it in mumbai mm -hmm. i have it in delhi so i will have each one of it defined as separate uh, business unit and the transactions are done uh, in this business unit basically whatever the revenue and the expenses that you capture so that you will consider as your uh, business unit so in this case it is your bangalore office chennai office mumbai office okay okay and then uh, organizations if uh, be user the, the brand, um, like chennai office or bangalore office organizations how we define organization meaning you are saying uh, the enterprise uh, like uh, when in real time like when we have to define as or we need to identify what can be the organization then um, on what basis we define like in bu you said that uh, transactions okay. and revenue that is the source to understand uh, at what level it is happening that we, we will define as bu right so similarly Correct. for organizations what could be the core thing which we need to verify a check to create it as organization Uh, I mean, when you say organization, you are referring to the uh, payroll entity, or you are referring to uh, uh, the uh, registration part of it, or you are referring to at the Possible. top level what is the yeah. Um, I think going forward, we will be defining as organizations and then cost centers, right? Two things in uh, as part of organization structure, right? So that's where even okay. I, I'm confused. what is the basis for that definition is what i want to understand no i mean uh, organization is at a uh, higher level the higher level definition is organization so you can call it uh, your business one as an organization and business two as an organization and you can call the entire setup as an organization so it it's at the hi higher level so so let's say if you want to call the tata group as an organization so that is different and each business so that is different so i'm just trying to understand your question so okay. uh, so probably i'll explain the how the structure will be built in in fusion so maybe yeah. you can add your question to it sure sure yeah that so helps this, yeah so in this case so i i have a business Uh, in india only so for the purpose of understanding i'll consider only the okay. india business okay yeah okay okay so i'll consider only the uh, india business okay so on top i have uh, the tata group are you sorry to let are you sharing the yeah. screen we are seeing the zoom call only skype call only Yeah, I mean, I have shared my this thing. Okay, okay. If you are typing in somewhere. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, so I'll just. put this so this is tata group okay so i am considering only the india operation okay so now uh, i'll have my uh, steel entity okay then i will have my uh, information technology entity and i'll have my motor business so that is vehicle manufacturing okay so now so so first thing is that so each one of it will be registered under any particular uh, region or the country specific registrations will be there okay so this is what we are referring to the legal entity so this probably we are sure but i'm just putting both okay so this we call it as an enterprise uh, 
can you zoom out uh, it is very yeah yeah thank you yeah so so this is our enterprise okay so this will have a uh, registered information which means we will have the legal address for this entity and again i will have my registered entity here so i'll have my address attached to this steel entity okay so i'll call this as tata steel and this i'll call it as uh, tcs okay and i'll call this as a tata motors so for each one of it i have address associated with this so based on this i will have my gst uh, number and the other registration details the place of registration and the other information so based on that i'll create my legal entity so now uh, i have something called legislative data group so legislative data group when i'll uh, create is that so i'm not giving here but i'm just trying to explain things here so tata group is at uh, global which means this enterprise can be only one we cannot have more than one enterprise in fusion so in ebs if you take you have multiple business unit but sorry multiple uh, business group but here you cannot have multiple enterprise so when we talk about enterprise it is only one enterprise that we can have okay so let's say so now i have uh, multiple uh, regions that i'm doing operations okay so for india so what i'll do is that i'll create one for one uh, L ldg for india and the other one for singapore okay so now here i have my uh, steel operation so i will <coughs> associate my uh, india ldg with uh, steel india okay and similarly i'll attach it for the second ldg that is with uh, singapore as well so similarly for the other business as well so this we will associate or this we will uh, take it as an workaround to uh, make uh, the business flow as per this thing so let's say i'm moving from uh, ebs to fusion so i'll have to think about uh, the business group that i have it there and how do i bring that business group here so it is based on this bridge that will bring that data okay so that is one thing and uh, then i have my uh, primary ledger okay so primary ledger so let's assume that i have three ledgers so for each business unit sorry each business so i have separate primary ledger okay and uh, then i have my multiple business units so in this case business unit so let's say only one business unit i'm taking it but it is usually more than at least one okay so now for each business unit so i will have my uh, manufacturing unit okay and uh, then i will have my uh, inventory unit and also i'll have my sub inventory unit okay so inside this we will have multiple uh, uh, units so let's say i have my assembly uh, part and then i have my finished good part and then I ha i'll have my work in progress items so there will be multiple compartments inside this manufacturing unit so which we are segregating based on this so that is inventory unit or the sub inventory unit okay so now each one of it so as a global so we will have the payroll entity so payroll entity will come uh, probably here okay so i'll have my uh, steel id and motor separately okay and here again i'll have my manufacturing unit one two three so it's basically uh based on the business whether we are having it as manufacturing unit or probably the manufacturing hub so if you take example as bmw so it's not the manufacturing unit that you will have it's the vast area so wherein you will have manufacturing hubs so hubs meaning that it, that's a vast area wherein you will manufacture for multiple countries so let's take india china operations so you will have for the entire asia so you'll have uh, the manufacturing parts that is manufactured here in indo china okay so from here the uh, finish code is shipped to multiple locations or the places okay so that's what 
based on the business. So you will have the manufacturing unit or the manufacturing hubs. So in this case, I have taken manufacturing unit. OK, so for each one of it, so you will have probably the uh, inventory units. So inside inventory, so probably you will have multiple again uh, the assembly and the work in progress items. So different things will be there. OK, so now. If you look at your uh, transaction, so how your transaction will start is that so probably you will have your first your uh, the what do you call the raw material sourcing that alternates from your business unit. OK, so that you call it as an payable. So payable, we'll see it in detail at last. So for understanding purpose, I'll just explain this. So you have your uh, sourcing for raw material. OK, so once the item has arrived in your inventory, so that is here. OK, so item is stored and the item is again sent to here based on your internal order, internal transfers basically tra with the transfer price. OK, and uh, then what you are doing is that manufacturing and selling the item. So basically the transaction mostly happens here at the business unit. So now this information is passed here. OK, and if you look at in detail, so this legal entity is associated with this primary ledger. OK, and this business unit is again associated with this uh, primary ledger. So basically whatever the transaction that you do in the system, so it is basically put to this particular repository, the accounting repository or the primary ledger. OK, so now your uh, transaction is stored here, but in terms of entities or the organization at high level, if you see, so I can call it this as an organization. So, OK, because I have this Tata Steel as my organization or the entity and I'll call this as my branch. So what I understand is that when you say organization, it is the uh, steel entity that you are referring not uh, the enterprise or the Tata group. Right, yeah. OK. Mm. <clears throat> Under the steel also, like let's suppose if we are providing that steel to for different different purposes, like uh, one for the. Mm, if they have separated that also, right? I'm not able to put the question exactly. So in that way, that uh, purpose also matters there. Then that will be one organization and co OK. Let me ask in another way, like a cost center segment is there, right? When we define. Yeah, right. OK, yeah. so what how we define them is which we will. Uh, uh, for what type of uh, attributes we enable that cost center segment? What is the. Um, basis for enabling uh, enabling the cost center segment? Yeah, so car center is basically your department. So if you are transferring between the department, so how do you want to handle that in terms of revenue capture and the channel of revenue? OK, so that's where you talk about uh, the cost, this thing. But apart from that, you have the uh, costing. I'm not sure if you're talking about this cost organization. So we're in. So for example, let's say I'm uh, uh, I'm purchasing a raw material called, uh, let's say, uh, what do you call the chipset? OK, so chipset is my raw material. So probably I'm manufacturing laptop. So let's take Dell as an example. OK, so now what I'll do is that this, this chipset, I'll use it for probably uh, uh, what do you call the uh, laptop or I'll use it for desktop or I'll use it for different products also. But chips I will purchase as a whole. OK. So I'll not be able to determine exactly whether this chip goes to this item, mm. this particular model of laptop or this particular model of desktop. So what I'll do is that I'll import this transaction as the default value. So from here, what I'll do is that so from here, meaning that here, that is my SBU one is there. OK, so from here I have my SBU two. So from here to here, I'll, I'll do my uh, transfer orders. OK, so based on this transfer order, so basically between department when you say, uh, I, I believe you're referring to this part of uh, costing. So now this costing will come into picture when you transfer between uh, the SBU 1 and SBU 2. OK, 
So that is based on the casting rule that you have uh, written and in terms of final consolidated financial statement. So this will uh, be drawn based on this costing transaction that you have done. So in terms of accounting, so you will have the uh, two accounts. So one is that your receipt accounting and the other one is your cost accounting because Reset when you do it, it's it's not the actual product or the uh, the product segment that you will capture, but instead you will have this as a default value because you will not be able to determine whether you are going to use this product only for manufacturing of laptop or only for the purpose of desktop. So this costing occurs when you transfer the item and when we use it for manufacturing and for the different transactions. OK, so that is when you will know exactly what kind of uh, item is this or what this raw material used for what kind of manufacturing process okay so that you will be able to arrive when you see uh, your uh, costing so uh, i believe your your question is this this part uh, that is on the uh, cost. actually at the managed departments we do have right when we define the managed departments in fusion there is one setup right so there we will be uh, providing the cost centers and uh, the uh, that's where I was asking, but uh, you can leave it, Arun. When we come to that, I think uh, I can understand. You are that. talking about uh, the car center in the uh, yeah. structure, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Arun, it depends upon, I think she's talking about the car center. Uh, if it is that, okay. then it depends upon where, where, at what level the company wanted to take an income statement. So, okay. So oh. the income statement will have the revenue and expenses where oh. so the, the chart of account structure should be enabled okay this is a cost center so using that qualifier or the segment label in fusion you can draw your uh, uh, income statement okay? okay yeah so yeah and whatever arun was talking about it is completely a different kind of accounting the cost accounting how you will do it when you have a different or inventory org where you say okay I, at the moment between two inventory org that cost accounting, how it should be captured. That's what Arun was trying to explain. Yeah, it is more of a SCM uh, portion, right? This uh, cost accounting will be covered. Uh, yes, exactly. oh, okay. Yeah, 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 that is different. So that's what uh, I said. So will not, will not for uh, understanding. Uh, I, I explained this part, but. but I if you're fine, yeah, got it. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, fine, Arun. Please proceed. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, we have covered uh, the setup part of it. So we'll start with uh, the transactions. Okay. I think uh, the role is not given, so let me quickly give the uh, role to the user.
Okay, so so this is your uh, landing screen. Okay, so if you have access to your general ledger, so this is kind of an uh, super user access. So wherein you can create your journal entries, you can view your journal entries, and uh, you can track your balances. And if you want to close your period or open your period, you can do it here. Okay, so I'll start with uh, general accounting dashboard. Okay. Okay, I think access is not okay. Okay, I think uh, I'll have to do the setups again. So for now, I'll take uh, the one that is here. Okay, so probably uh, tomorrow's class, so I'll just complete the setup for one entity. Okay, and then I'll show you there because the last week that we created, I couldn't see it here. So probably I'll show it there. So for now, I'll use this India primary ledger. Okay, to Show this to demonstrate. Okay. Okay, so this would be your uh, dashboard. So, so I have selected this one. So you can see here on top. So what is your ledger? So the ledger that I have taken in this case is that India primary ledger. Okay, so here. So one thing is that you have your account monitor on top. So basically if you want to track a particular accounts of uh, the, the change in the transactions or probably uh, the amount that you want to track so you can keep so there are multiple parameters that basically you can use okay so this as you can see here on top so this is uh, 12 so the period is different okay so if you want to probably uh, do it for a different period you can run it so I don't think we will have more transaction for this ledger in this month that is uh, 1023 that is this month October 2023 okay so probably if we look at the uh, previous uh, periods that is probably let's say April to June or July so you'll have the transaction state so which will reflect here okay uh, we'll create one journal entry and we'll see uh, how this transaction is I mean this this dashboard how it is changing okay yeah so it, th that's about the account monitor and then you will have your immediate actionable item so it's either the intercompany transaction or your uh, journal that you are importing okay so if there is any exception to it so you'll have uh, the transactions with the uh, message 
okay so you can correct it and you can import that particular journal entry okay and uh, then here you will have uh, your uh, period status okay so since i have selected for india so india primary ledger so i'm saying uh, the status for the india primary ledger so the latest uh, period is october okay so the october period is open so that's why you are seeing this uh, as open okay so if you want to properly open or close the period so simply you can click the module or the uh, this thing the offering that you want to Arun, open i yeah. have a query here in the previous page yeah. you are talking about uh, uh, the journals which are incomplete we can correct it and then post it right is it only right. for the manual journals or for the imported journal also imported journal Some, also okay so the patch would be here and then right. we will have to correct it and then we can uh, uh, post it directly depending upon the privilege that has been given to us we can correct yeah. it and save right. it and then whoever has a privilege i can either yeah. post it come here and post it or i can do it in a, uh, the job request right wherever the schedule yeah. process of yeah, yeah. Okay, got it yeah yeah, yeah right. so and again th this is also based on the access so if i don't have access to a particular primary ledger so i'll not see the data here so if i have data so probably i'll have it here so i can correct it and i can load it so again as i said so we can do it here or in the uh, the other page the journal page also so both are same information that is so okay yeah so quickly i'll create one journal entry so so before that so we have uh, three ways of creating the journal entry so one is that you can create it as a manual journal okay so which we saw on our last session and the other one is that you can use uh, adfta so that is this option that is create journal and spreadsheet and then the other option that we have is that fbda okay so so when do you use your fbda template and when do you use adfta is that so adfta uh, works in certain way that it will not uh, uh, or it will show you the performance issue so if you cross more than uh, let's say 60000 or 1 lakh records okay so what we will do is that for those cases we will use fbda template okay so we can use so if we are importing it from other application so it is usually the uh, fbda that we will use so we will write a web service and we will call that and when this uh, the file is uh, put in the path so we will use our schedule process to import and these process so that is with the fbd and this is for the journal entry so let's say i am in at the end of the period closure activity so i wanted to pass an adjustment jb so which is more than 150 lines or 200 lines so i'll not be able to do it uh, manually uh, which means that i can i cannot select each uh, one line by line so what i'll do is that i'll say adfta and i will import the transaction okay so quickly i'll just show you so how it is linked so it, it is linked with the application okay so which means that this will validate your uh, the account code combination that we are providing it here okay But whereas FBD, what it will do is that so there are two steps. One is that loading, and the other one is importing. So this account code combination and the balancing, all those informations are checked. So when we have uh, yeah, so those validations are done. So when we have uh, the import process. So, but here if you see, so it's uh, the import process will be triggered automatically. Okay, so create your new. So for this, you'll have to download a tool to use this uh, ADFD. So I have already installed in my system. So we have this option. So I'll show also where to download that particular tool to use it. Okay. 
So you'll have to input your uh, credentials. So once uh, the credentials are done, so you will have the fields populated. OK, so this will not capture more information. It will capture only the mandatory information that is needed uh, to import the transaction. OK, so here if you see so this uh, ledger you can select it from here. So again, this is based on the access that is given to you. So if I don't have any access to uh, ledger, so I'll not be able to do anything with this uh, particular sheet. So I'll see only the null value. OK. So let me say 14 10 2023. OK, and uh, then you can keep the journal description. So let me give uh, today's date as well here. Adjustment. OK, so what I have given is that the ledger, the accounting date and uh, then the journal description. OK. So then we will have to fill in the uh, segment values. So company line of business account and these values. OK, so I can do double click and get the values. OK, so before that I'll just explain the sheet. So you'll have your uh, account code combination first thing and then you'll have your uh, currency that is entered currency. So whether you wanted to use INR or you wanted to use the other currency, you can do it because we did not restrict to a single currency. So you can uh, do or create transaction at the journal entry in multiple currencies. OK, and you can give your uh, uh, debit and credit. And then if you are entering a line, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yes. OK. OK, yeah, so the uh, entered uh, debit and credit and if you are entering foreign uh, currency, I mean if you are selecting foreign currency, so you'll have to give your conversion rate. OK, so based on that your account at debit and credit. Some sample data. Yeah, so I'll, yeah, okay. so I'm entering it, so I don't have sample data. I'll select the accounts and I will upload. Yeah, yeah. whatever available. Yeah. OK, so this is uh, the account code combination so that we will select. OK, so these are actually the default values that is given. So that's why we are seeing it. So it's only the uh, GL account that we will select. OK. So let me put this combination. So that is company. 410 is the uh, transaction that I'm doing. OK, so that is for line of business 4. OK. Yeah. OK, and uh, this I'm doing it with INR. And let me say 23500. OK, so similarly. I'll select for uh, the second account as well. So let me select. Okay, so the GL account that I have taken is that uh, the revenue account. 
okay and this is INR and on the credit side I'm putting the same amount okay so the debit and credit will be equal so since I'm not doing a foreign currency journal so I'm not giving this information okay and apart from that if you have uh, the DFF that is additional information that you are capturing so you can enter it here okay but these are the only mandatory information that you will see okay so you will find the mandatory information as asterisk or the star symbol okay so i'll just uh, submit this okay so you can say submit journal import and posting or you can say submit journal import only so you will do the posting after verification so you can say that okay and uh, then if you want to validate your uh, descriptive information or the additional information so you can check box i mean you can enable this checkbox okay so i'll just uh, give uh, submit and the other informations are optional so to send the notification or the other validations okay so this will trigger an uh, schedule process so once the schedule process is run so we'll have this journal created in the system okay so i'll just go to manage journal and let me query for this okay so this is the one that we gave that is jv1410023 so this is the one that we gave okay so we can see the status as posted because we gave import and uh, post uh, the journal entry okay yeah so if you have enabled uh, probably the uh, sequence yeah i think we did not see the sequence so i'll just show you so how to create the uh, sequence in the application so sequence is basically your voucher number okay so if you have enabled the voucher number so you will have your sequence name and you'll have your voucher number that is generated so you have two things so one is that your accounting sequence and the reporting sequence so it is here setup and maintenance okay so general ledger it is here okay it is this one okay so okay so you can give your uh, effective start date and uh, then you can say your initial sequence number okay so once this is done so you can just save and close and you can assign uh, this sequence to your ledger okay so i'll just say add so our ledger is india primary ledger this is the one okay so here you have uh, two things so whether you want to generate the sequence at uh, sub ledger transaction level or which means that you you want to sequence created at or you wanted to see it at ledger so if i want to see the sequence here so i'll have to any ledger so which means that i'll have general ledger and then i'll have the posting okay and you can associate your uh, this thing so which we created that is hak so this is the one that we created okay and you can have your attributes so if you want to probably include or exclude you can do it so if you want to add exception which means your exclusion part you can add it okay 
Yeah, so that's about the accounting sequence. So once the sequence is set, so you'll have the uh, number generated. So since this journal is already posted, so we will not have uh, the number generated for this particular transaction. So for the new journal that is created, we will have the sequence generated. Okay. Yeah, and uh, if you want to probably, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for one primary ledger, can we create another sequence for sub ledger? Like you said, yeah, no, for general create. account. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can get. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And one thing, like uh, in the sequence yeah. assignment, if we selected oh. a journal entry type as sub ledger. Then for the okay. manual journal entry, sequencing will be applied or? Uh, no, it will not. It will not. Only no. for the sub ledger transactions which are posted to GL, only that time it will right. be triggering this, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. And uh, then this is about the reversal. So basically the period uh, in which period you want to reverse this particular entry. So that's again based on this. So let's say um, you have. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one question here. Uh, yeah. Can I actually post a journal for a particular uh, ledger set itself? Or I have it is mandate infusion that I have to submit it for each ledger. No, no, you, you can run your batch. I mean, you can schedule your uh, accounting program also. So let's say you you, you want to no, post it. From program uh, level, yes. Uh, from okay. the uh, UI, will I be able to okay. do it? I mean. If I have a particular ledger access set, right? Uh, okay. uh, can, uh, can, I, can I pick, uh, there'll be one batch that has been created, like a manual spreadsheet. Can I go ahead okay. and then post it, that particular, the, the entire batch, which will have, um, thing right, like the one set. I mean, without program, I don't think you will be able, be able to, to do. Okay, got it. Yeah, I just wanted to check whether it's possible here. Yeah, because uh, program is what it will send it as a batch, but if you want to uh, do it for this thing, so it, it's basically the transaction by transaction. Okay. Okay, got it. So from UI, it will be uh, for a ledger, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so that's about it. So yeah, so the reversal, it's uh, just an option. So if you want to reverse this particular journal, so you can say the period, okay. And the uh, method, whether you want to change the sign or you want to switch your debit and credit so usually it is switching debit over credit okay so the entry will be i mean this particular journal entry will be reversed and this reversal entry will be created so you will have to post uh, that particular reversal entry to see the effect in your trial balance or the other financial reports okay so that is about your uh, reversing the journal okay and and, and no, no, no. Yeah. Can we reverse all the any whatever the type of transaction? Can we reverse it? Like even if, want, if hmm. yeah, you, you want to reverse it as an batch uh, instead of individual transaction. So when it allows uh, as as a whole, but not as a line level, we cannot reverse. Is it? No, line level you cannot do because uh, here if you see so because the line it it, it has posted so if you if if there is an option to reverse only one line which means that this particular entry will go unbalanced so oracle will not allow you to uh, the reversal of particular line if it is one journal that you want to reverse it so you can reverse here or if you want to reverse the entire journal batch itself you can do it but at line level you will not be able to reverse it okay but I, I I have a question like can we do any like even if it comes from projects any whatever no sub ledges can we reverse every okay. every transaction can can it allow no it will not allow usually because uh, based on the category so we will see 
uh, the transaction originate from this uh, particular source will not allow uh, the deletion of this thing. So, so that control is there, but because whatever transaction that is imported from your project or any other module, so if you are able to reverse all the transaction, but this is not suggested approach to uh, reverse your entries from there because you will not have uh, the matching data between your sub ledger and general ledger. But as an option, if you want to reverse, you can change this option and you can reverse it. But it's yeah. not the suggested approach to delete the transaction originated from your sub ledger. Yeah, Lavanya, yeah. the data integrity will be lost because yeah. uh, if it is always advised, if it is a journalist flowing from a sub ledger, you want mm. it to reverse, you go to the sub ledger, the source, and then reverse it from there. So you get an equivalent uh, journal yeah. pass to GF. Otherwise, as uh, Arun mentioned, the data integrity will be lost here. Then end of the month, you will not be able to reconcile between a sub ledger and the GL balance. Right. OK, there won't be like uh, from if I, if I'm sending it from sub ledger to GL, it's coming in. But when I'm doing from a GL, it won't go back to sub ledger. That's why the reconciliation is not happening. Is that? Yes, yes, it's one way in GL. It's a repository. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you can take it for a reporting from the database, but mm -hmm. it doesn't send any information to uh, anything apart from your period opening. So that's okay. where. Hmm? Okay. OK, got it then. Yeah. Thanks, Arun. OK. Yeah, so then we have uh, the uh, approval. So if you want to set uh, the journal approval, so which we will enable at uh, the ledger. So if you have enabled it, so you can do the journal approval. And this journal approval is basically based on the criteria that we give. So probably let's say I wanted to uh, set the approval only for the adjustment entries, which is created manually in general ledger module. So I can set this criteria in journal approval criteria page and I can say the list of managers, uh, I mean the creator and the approver, basically the maker and checker concept so that you can do it. OK, so since we have not enabled it, the approval part, so we are seeing this as not required. OK. And then the fund check, so fund check also we did not Arun, enable. Just, uh, yeah. just a question yeah. here, the workflow status is um, it is like in ebus it is no inbuilt workflow right you have to have a uh, integration between the workflow builder and uh, thing yeah. how about infusion is it handled only with the bpm or it is something else like a uh, functional consultant like me can i go use the uh, pre any predefined rules are there where i can go use it or how or how 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 should we do it if there is an approval uh, that needs yeah. to be set up infusion yeah. Can a so functional this, consultant handle or it's only um, with the technical resource like in your artwork? No, te no, technical resource is not needed for this approval setup. So it's uh, the BPM setup that will be done by uh, the functional consultant. So we don't need uh, the technical assistance here to set up the journal approval. So it's uh, the same page that is BPM. So for invoice, for journals, for the expense report for all those approvals. So we have one screen wherein we can configure. OK, so from I believe it is 22 D. It is only for the AP invoices we have as an Excel option. So for the others, it's only the standard uh, UI that as a functional consultant, we can uh, do the configuration there based on the requirement. It is only the criteria that we set and uh, the manager or the whosoever we wanted to make as an approval. So it, it, it will be done by the functional consultant. Only. Okay, so it is like uh, predefined rules are there. I can go create an approval group and then uh, right. I can do it. OK, so like uh, likewise, like uh, the employee, it should be registered as an employee and also like a user or where does it goes checks the validation. Just the user is OK or they, they have to be registered uh, as an employee as well. 
I mean, to set up, you are asking, or uh, to have? Yeah, the like if I have to, if I'm setting setting up an approval, right? So there'll be an approval okay. group or approval hierarchy. So I can have a two or three level, however I wanted to. So in that case, okay. how do we? There is certain scenarios when you say it's a functional consultant can handle. So is that that like a, on a category base? I say okay, there are hundred of categories. Only for ten categories, mm -hmm. I always wanted it should go go through the approval process. So can I define it okay. at the category basis and whatever it is when i say it's an approval it is an employee or a user who should be able to uh, the manager as you said so should i have to create him as an user alone the login user where we were talking about the security console is that is fine or should i have to associate him like an employee because for the practice no, right now like without attaching an employee i'm able to go do all this uh, config right uh, so will i be able to do that for the approval also or should they be created like an employee so the system goes and checks okay it, it should yeah user should be associated with an employee no employee is not needed for this thing so it's only the uh, the application implement implementation consultant role which will give access to all the setups so if i have access to this setup i will be able to do the uh, journal approval rule setup so this comes with the application implementation consultant role so if I have that role, I'll be able to do the configurations in the system. So the so this approval rules, it's for the invoice, the expense, all those things. So it's only one rule that is linking for the entire approval mechanism. That is for AP, right? For journal uh, approvals? Journal also, journal also. So it is not, I cannot do it like a category based on anything. If that, then I have to customize it, which is Fusion is not. Uh, entertaining right yeah so the, the category wise it is basically the rule that we will have to write it but by default by category rule will not be set oh okay so as a functional consultant if i have a little training on this bpm i should be able to write uh, write the okay. it's not the sql query that i need to do but it is all pick up and drop just okay got it got it okay got it. that's where i was thinking like how do i the requirements keep changing right okay yeah. So then the objects are available. I just need to place the object and see what right. is the route, route it should take. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, but I think we need to check whether those predefined object is available corresponding to category or not. If it is not available, we no, cannot it should customize be, it, right? Uh, yeah, Sandhya. So most of the time, all the elements in GL uh, for the upward sources, I think the seeded ones, they should have it, right? When they say functional consultant can do it. I think it should be there. If it is not, then you cannot. You have to look, look for customization, or they cannot use the fusion VPN workflow. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, the category wise, you'll be able to do it uh, here itself. Uh, so you you'll not need uh, the SQL part here, or uh, or yeah, maybe if you can explain more on your uh, scenario. So probably I can explain. Uh, because what I can understand is that so. Okay. For example, the month ends will have an adjustment, right? So such okay. such scenarios, uh, I say okay, the adjustment category should go in for an approval. Maybe a manager one on the on the controller level. So I will have okay. the senior accountant and also a controller who has to go and then approve it for an adjustment entry. So this is one scenario. Okay. It can be differ from each uh, uh, entity level or at the ledger level. That can differ, but at least at this level, how do we actually do it as a function? Okay. Yeah, so it's uh, simple. So here, if you see, so we have uh, our probably let me create a new rule. So I'll, I'll just uh, create one rule. OK, so let me give a name. So this is for India Ledger. OK. So now I have uh, so there are two things. So one is that uh, if this condition matches, so what system should do? So that's where the approval. So it is auto approval. Uh, we wanted to have. As an. Uh, approval based on the category. That is if uh, this is, let's say, uh, the uh, ledger one so how this should be and let's say this is category one so how this should be here 
so basically here if you see so if you say find so you will find all the information here so let's say <coughs> i wanted to set an approval based on the creator so i'm trying to do a um, make a checker okay and then uh, the second scenario i'll show how we will select our category and how will we set the uh, approval rule for the category so let's say if it is an uh, adjustment so this will go to person a and if that is category a or sorry category b so this will go to the different approval so i'll i'll show that so before that i'll show this part okay so here the, there are a lot of uh, param i mean input parameter that make we can use basically mm -hmm. so first thing i'll take is that uh, with creator so if this is created by a uh, person a so how do we route this approach so i'll show this soon okay so here as you can see so i can say based on the assignment name or so these are basically the hcm components so if we have hcm also implemented in this so we can use this or probably if you know only the uh, creator name so you can give the creator name or probably let's say the job um, name is it possible for you to increase your font size or something like that because the condition process yeah this is better okay. yeah, thank you okay yeah yeah now clear right yeah at least i can read what is there thank you okay Okay, so let me say it is created by. So I'll just uh, give this name. Okay, so let me create another user also. So for now, I'll just say it's Pani dot Murthy. So I'll say this is constant and i'll say okay okay so now if this is this particular journal is created by uh, this person so how this should behave is what we are giving it here in then condition okay so i'll just so there are multiple options so i'll just give uh, the approver name here so here you can see so we have the approval group so we have uh, the job level and then the management chain position and then supervisory. So supervisory is something that uh, if I have associated manager to this creator, that is if a person B is associated with Pani.Muti, uh, so this approval will automatically go to that person. So now let's say, let's take a scenario. So I have a uh, four resources here okay so the creator one so creator has uh, sent the request to his manager okay and uh, the resource three is manager to resource two and resource four is manager to resource three so now what i will do is that i have an option called manage user so wherein i'll say for this particular person so he's the manager okay so now this so so now the supervisory uh, thing will do in, work in such a way that it will look for the manager. If the manager is not present, the uh, approval will not flow through. It will stop there. Okay, so we will have to reinitiate the approval because the approval will fail without manager. So now I will have to attach or associate the manager to this particular user there and I will have to do it. So this is one option and uh, then the second option that i have is that i can directly link uh, the user so which means i'll tell to the system that uh, this is the user so let's say if this is resource a that is creating this uh, journal entry so it will directly go to resource b so apart from this i'll not use uh, the second level or the third level approach so that is when i will use uh, the resource option okay 
and uh, then the next option that i have is that position so position and management chain it's almost same but not the exactly so management chain is something that based on the hierarchy that is defined or based on the position and the role so this flow will work and the position is about uh, let's say vp so i have certain journal that is created so if this crosses particular amount so i wanted to notify it to vp or uh, cfo so what i will do is that i'll say position so now if this approval so probably i'll add uh, two or three more conditions also if this is the category this is the ledger and this is the amount so i will say that it will be routed to this position which means that this will route to uh, person uh, b or c okay so now let's say uh, i have uh, another thing called there are two vps in my company so now this notification will be sent to both the persons or whoever approves first so this notification will be approved okay so that is one thing so similarly we have the uh, job level also so this again works the same way and then we have the approval group so approval group is something that we can define so let's say i have uh, three approvers so i can set the uh, sequence here so i can say he is uh, approval one he is approval two and he is approval three so now uh, I, I i will associate this approval group here and when this uh, creator is sending request or uh, requesting for the approval so this will follow the same sequence which i have given in the approval group okay arun uh, position is yeah. uh, uh, we will be providing the job role or uh, uh, which one this one job for role position for position yeah. no position okay. and job both are from hcm so we'll, it is not based on role actually so if it is based on role so we will have to give here on the criteria page so here on top so we will we will have to give based on the role but here we will not have role it is the actually the position uh, for it each uh, employee so we'll have a position so that is what i'm referring to here okay got it Yeah, so for now I'll take this option that is uh, supervisory. Okay. And one more question. Uh, yeah. When we say supervisory, right? Will it stop at yeah. the next level uh, manager, or it will uh, like uh, that manager can have uh, one more uh, manager supervisory hierarchy, right? So yeah. it will stop at the immediate manager, or it will go further uh, also. no it will go further also so based on the setup that uh, we are doing so i'll i'll just show how we will do this so we have something called manage user okay so here uh, i'll say this particular person is uh, employee and i'll say Okay, let me give here. This is employee. Okay, so this will ask for the legal employer. So legal employer is nothing but your legal entity or your payroll uh, unit. Okay, so that is what we are referring to the legal employer. So our legal employer will be selected here, and the unit that I'm working for. and my uh, job and create this things i can give and here you can see the manager so now let's say i have uh, three levels of approval so in case of supervisory what will happen is that so first system will check for the creator so in this case creator is funny okay so funny has created this request so now this will look for the manager if there is manager so it will route to this manager again his manager will have a uh, the same uh, setup that is employee he will be treated as an employee and again he will have uh, his manager so this uh, approval will be again sent to his manager so it will work multiple levels also so it's so when this when a particular person doesn't have <coughs> the manager so that is when the request will be approved okay got it okay so i'll just say this as no for auto 
so if we so let's say for few uh, journal categories so we don't want to have it approval or i wanted to eliminate that so i can say false which means that that will not be considered for auto approval so instead it will route to the supervisory or uh, basically it will follow the approval process to get this particular journal approved so if this meets this particular condition okay so i can say the starting participant so let me create one user Okay, so this uh, username, so we can link it if it is already created. So if it is created using the security console, so wherein we will create a user and associate the roles. So there we can use it. Okay, so if we don't have the user created there, so we can say enter username. Okay, and you can give your username and you can say save and close or probably if you want to system to generate this username and this thing so all you have to do is that provide your email id so based on the given email id so this particular notification will be sent to you the username and the password okay and uh, this you can add so this is uh, basically the lookup i believe so you can add multiple okay so for now i'm selecting employee so employee will be seeded one so oracle will give this option so apart from that you can add to your list also okay so i'll select uh, the india entity okay and then the business unit okay this is india. So let me just save this. And I'll associate uh, this person to Funny's manager. So let me check if it is created. I think it's loading. Yeah, so this is active. Let me check here. Yeah, so the user details are created. So this is the one that we gave Venkat at uh, tcs.com and the username that we gave is this. Okay. So I'll just create one for funny because funny is not created as a uh, employee in the system because funny has access as an application implementation consultant but not as employee so i'll just create one
okay so since the account is already created so let me link uh, the account that is created yeah so this is the one okay so this is employee and i'm selecting the same entity okay and then let me attach a uh, venkat Okay. Uh, Arun, just a small query here. Yeah. There is something called legal yeah. uh, employer, right? Will it have? Which, right. Will it pick up all legal entity or whichever I say that legal entity can be also a payroll unit? Only those are um, will list here or all legal entity. No, not all legal entity. So whatever we mention as legal employer, so we have this checkbox called legal employer. So if we enable the checkbox uh, there, okay, got so it. So only those will be those legal entity will be popular. Yeah. Okay, so I have created one for Pani and I have associated uh, his manager that is Venkat, which we created just before. Okay. So now uh, let me save this record and associate his manager. So I'm using uh, the supervisory hierarchy here. okay so i think what you uh, was referring is uh, this one to give the sql query but this is not mandatory so even without this uh, sql expression so you can build your uh, approval rules so this is the username Okay, so let me just see. Okay. Or not. Okay, it has taken. Okay, so I have just uh, given this option. So let me save uh, the one that we created. So this will basically validate if there is any error. So it will stop us. Okay, I think this is not added. I think uh, this did not pick the user, so that is why it's saying it couldn't get the manager. Okay, manager, so okay. yeah, I think if we yeah. click OK, it will take up the manager from the user, right? Yeah, it will take from the user. But since I saved it, it's picking the old record, so it's taking unreferenced. Yeah, so I have selected this supervisory. Key top is not created.
this is the username Vicky Miller get supervisory and get okay. And this is the one I'm not sure why this is not picking. Yeah, this is the participant tool which I have given also. Okay, uh, let me try once. If not, probably let me check why this is failing. And I'll show you tomorrow. We'll see the remaining topics. Try to pick it from here. Okay, let me check this. I'll I'll show this uh, tomorrow.
Yeah, I'll show this tomorrow because uh, this is the standard one that I have used and I have not even written uh, the custom component. So this is standard uh, the approval type uh, because I'm taking it from uh, the user. I'm not giving the custom approval group also. So ideally it should be picking it. So I need to check why this is not picked up. So let me create one. I'll replicate and then I'll demonstrate uh, tomorrow. OK. OK, yeah, and uh, then we have uh, the journal import and these things. OK, so these are uh, small things. So probably if you have any journals that is an interface and you have the schedule that is running, but somehow the schedule is not picking the journal. So now you want to correct it. So you can say correct import error. So this will open in an Excel format. So whatever the so because I'm not showing it this now because I don't have anything in the interface. So all those records will be processed already. OK, so I'll not have the data. So I'll just uh, show you how the file looks like and how do we uh, correct the interface data. OK, and then we can say import. So by importing it, so this particular journal will be imported and if we give as and post it so it's similar to the journal input okay so if you have given it so it will basically post the entries okay OK, so you can keep your uh, ledger and then you can keep your uh, source. So let me try to give uh, payables. OK, and if I want to see if there is any transaction that is not imported, so simply I can say search. So this will look for uh, the interface data. OK, if there is. There's no record in this, so you will not have any data here. OK, so if you have it, so you will have here with the error description and you can correct that. Uh, correct that particular error and then you can import it. So simply you can upload it. So this will be. Uh, uploaded into the system, which means this particular journal will be created. OK. So then you can import uh, the journals here. So you can say import journals. And if you want to clear the interface data, so there are uh, two options that you can do. So one is that you have uh, a program, the schedule process called uh, uh, clear the interface tables. So which means that will clear for all. It's not only for the uh, journal that is created it's for all which means that your receivables your payable all those interface data will be cleared okay mm -hmm. then you can say whether it is unprocessed or processed because this is the only thing that you have it there so it's not recommended because probably you might be having few sales order also so if you say it's out there so if you delete your interface table it's not only going to delete your journal part so it's also going to clear your uh, receivable part also. OK, so if you have anything to clear it out, so you can say delete import data and you can clear those records. Uh, so Arun, in that case, sorry, I got lost uh, with my mic. I couldn't talk okay. uh, with the BPM. I will okay. explore it and then I'll talk to you on that. But okay. for, a couple, okay. for a few, for five to ten minutes, I couldn't. Uh, this delete import, when you say it receivable or payable subledger, right? When you delete it from yeah. here, 
and uh, and should I have to again uh, 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 generate uh, subledger accounting and then interface to GA? Sub for some reason, see for some, okay. some reason, receivables or payables journal got uh, errored out here, and uh, okay, uh, and we decided to delete the journal. So how are we going to do it in the subledger? Do we need to again? Um, create the uh, subledger accounting and then transfer to GL or just run this transfer to GL program from the receivables. I'm not sure how would this happening in Fusion. So I'm just no, once that particular uh, accounting data is cleared, so you have uh, initiated the uh, accounting program or the individual data that we are trying to account it. Once you have pushed it, so it travels through this uh, uh, SLA. So let's assume that the data is in SLA and somehow we have cleared that data. So but one thing is that we have a profile option. You can say that uh, the delete option is not allowed if the transaction is from, uh, let's say, AR or AP or whatsoever the module is. So you can set that, but here in this case, so the delete option is uh, in the interface, but this uh, accounting, uh, the accounting of transaction, so that will not pass through the interface table. It will pass through the uh, SLA table. So this accounting data will not be lost, but if there is an interface data that you lost, so that will not be able to retrieve it. So we'll have to raise an SR with Oracle to retrieve it. So they will give us the fits, and based on that, we can. Uh, retrieve the uh, data, but there is no way that we can retrieve the data once okay. it is deleted. Got it. So I cannot go rerun the program because there in subledger is yeah. already updated. The accounting is generated right. and it is uh, got it. Okay. Right. Right. Go ahead. Please. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And. Uh, then for what scenarios yeah. we will be using it? I understand that uh, ideally uh, it is not recommended to delete the data, right? Uh, from interface Correct. using this delete yeah. input data. Then uh, Oracle has provided this option for the end user means in which scenario it is ideal to use? It is processed data. So once the data is processed, so you can clear it at out. So let's say I I'm importing. San yeah. Sandhya, I think uh, I think this kind of thing is useful when we take it from our legacy, right? There'll be lots of sources, so we we uh, we do some feeds or something like that. We are getting the journals, probably some uh, mandate field in Oracle Fusion is missing. That's why it is in uh, import. So such kind of things, I think we can delete it. I guess that's my wild guess. Otherwise, I don't know. Like if it is from source of Oracle so, subledges, then as a, as a Arun said um, they don't uh, suggest us to delete it here, right? So, yeah. okay. Or otherwise, as one more scenario, like uh, let's suppose we have uh, already processed transactions and they're all in, uh, um, but there is something called purge interface data while we uh, run this, right? So, that will do whatever you're telling, no, Arun, for processed transactions yeah. if you want to purge, yeah. right? Right, that is, yeah, right, that is from the schedule process. Okay, so the same thing will we can do for process transactions using delete import data also. That's what you are telling, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, correct. So this is for uh, this particular module. So th th this works inside uh, GL. So similarly, we have it for uh, payables and similarly, we have it for receivables also. So these are module specific and it is associated with uh, the application. So it works only inside this. But whereas purge interface data, so when we talk about the purge interface, so we have two things. So one is purge, uh, I mean, I'm talking about the uh, schedule process. So we have purge auto invoice, which works only for receivables. And then we have the purge interface tables. So the, this purge interface table works for uh, all, which means that is global. So once you say, uh, delete processed uh, data and you give your process ID, so this will work. So you can give your exact process ID or you can give your range. So when you give your range, which means it will look for all the uh, process that has been run. 
So if uh, this particular program runs and checks for any interface data, it will clear all the interface data that is created using this uh, process ID. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that's about uh, this. OK, and uh, then we have uh, the period closure. So period closure, I'll just explain. So I mean, it's known thing, but I'll, I'll just explain what is period closure. OK, so basically you have the monthly period closure and then you have uh, the yearly closure periods. So uh, when we created this ledger option, so we saw something called future enterable period. So the future enterable period that we gave is one. OK, so that's the date we, which we will use basically for the period closure activity. So I'll, what I'll do is that as a process, so I'll look for uh, the open transactions which is not accounted or uh, probably I wanted to uh, do the mass addition that is from payables to uh, 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 asset module and then I have few transaction that needs to be accounted or probably I'll do the sweep uh, transaction or the sweep accounting. OK, so once all the activities are done, so I'll close my sub periods. So once my sub periods are closed and I find uh, the data intact with my uh, GL and my sub modules, so then I can uh, come to the screen and I can close uh, the periods. So for example, I want to close it for uh, GL. So I can simply say here. Sorry, I, I'll have to click here and say close period. OK. So since this is uh, November, so it's not allowing because this is in future interval period. So this is the current period so which I can close. OK. And uh, if you want to open a new period, so you can simply click the future interval period and say open period or probably let's say you wanted to open. You're doing it as a fresh one. You wanted to open for all periods. So you can say open target period and you can open the periods till that particular date. OK. So this is one thing and then you have. Uh, then you have this year and processing, so wherein you can create your uh, create balance uh, balance sheet journals and then you'll have create a uh, penal journals. I think there is an access related. I'm allowed to give a role, I think. So that's why you are seeing here with no data. So we are seeing only the header part, but the actual function we are not seeing it. So we'll have to check the role. I think it's the uh, general accounting manager, but I believe I gave only the general accountant. So that's why I'm not giving. I'm not seeing the options for processing the period closure activities. Okay. Uh, Arun, so it's like the period place checklist that you are talking about, right? Will it be? Will, yeah, I, right. uh, will it be shown as a dashboard here? Like, okay, fine. Mass addition is done from peer payables to asset. That job is done. Will it like a, the checklist will be highlighted like a, a dashboard here or? Uh, no, that will not uh -huh. be shown. So this okay. dashboard is just uh, to see whether the period is open or period is closed. Okay. This got it. So you can got it. Uh, yeah, even the exceptions will not be shown here. So it's the same process. We will have to run the schedule process to understand the exception and the close it. So it will so be done at the sub ledger level and it, this yeah. dashboard will only populate on the periods. Or period yeah, periods. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. only the periods. OK, and uh, then this is about the intercompany period status. If we are using probably the AGIS, so global intercompany, so we'll have the period status here. And if you are running a uh, translation, so if we have multiple uh, currencies to our business, so we'll have the translation status also here. So we'll enable uh, multi-currency and then I'll, I'll show, I'll, I'll demonstrate the uh, translation process. Okay. 
<clears throat> and uh, then we have something called inquire and analyze account. So this is uh, something like uh, the account analysis which we had uh, in EBS. OK, so slight difference is that so there we have uh, the uh, segments. So I can select my ledger. I can select my period and I can give my account code combination. So I'm not talking about the account analysis report. I'm talking about the account analysis in the UI. OK, so that's the same thing, but with few additions to this. So this is linked with uh, the yes. ES database. So when we talk about uh, GL, mostly we will have impact our relation with uh, ES ES database. So similarly, this is linked with uh, ES ES database. So it's the multi dimensional data that we are trying to populate it here. OK. So here if you see, so it's almost uh, same, but with few additions. So one thing is that you will have your uh, segments. So my segment starts from uh, company till uh, my this thing inter company. So I have five segments company line of business, cost center product and inter company. So then I have my uh, ledger. I can select a uh, ledger. Then I can select my scenario whether this is budget or this is actual so I can select it uh, from the list basically. OK, so I think I did not enable it, so I'm seeing only the actual. OK, so that's about the scenario and then I can select my uh, balance amount. So whether I wanted to have uh, the period activity or I want to see only the debit or credit, so I can select appropriately. OK and then the currency and the currency type the total and these things okay so now if you select and uh, refresh this so this should give your uh, balance so <coughs> so we'll create one journal entry and uh, then we'll see how this uh, this balance is changing so for now we don't have it. So if you click here, so this is something like a drill down. So we're in, you can give multiple uh, parameter and you can see. So this is how it will look like. So these are our uh, segment values. OK, so this is multiple combinations. So we can restrict it to a particular combination here or probably simply we give blind search so it will populate for all. So now as you can see, so it's only for one account that we have that is double on two double zero. So only for this particular account we have this. OK, <clears throat> so now this is the opening balance. And if you click this uh, period activity, so this will uh, drill down to your uh, journal. So from journal, it's similar to your uh, drill down that we had in EBS. So wherein you can drill down to your actual transaction. So in our case, it's only the one journal that we created just before uh, this uh, part that is for 23500. We created one journal. So if we have probably multiple invoices based on that, if we have this journal, so we'll have again the second drill down to the amount column. So if you click this amount, it is going to give the breakup. And if you click that particular transaction, it is going to uh, give more information whether this is payable information, payable invoice or the payment. So that is going to give the more information. OK. Mm, Arun, uh, when we are running yeah. amount, uh, type is base we provided, right? What does it mean? So base is a uh, standard actually. So it's uh, it, it, it is uh, basically uh, the uh, the <coughs> the balance that uh, system is considering, but will not have option there. So it's the standard value that is given by Oracle actually. If you see here amount, so you'll see only one thing as uh, base. So which means the actual is what it is referred as base, but this is the only option that we will have it here. So in real time also we will not have multiple options and we can always select this base only then in that base case. only. Yeah, right. Okay. 
okay yeah so here <coughs> so this is the one okay so if you drill down you will have uh, the another 23 500 so the debit and credit so if you have a balance so you will have it here so since we gave debit and credit as the same amount and it's the only one entry that we created so on top if you see it's the amount as zero but if you uh, extend this expand this so you will see the amount so for the another account so you will see so again this is an drill down wherein you can drill down to multiple levels till the transaction so this is uh, something like an uh, monitor that uh, we can see in the dashboard okay uh, arun this uh, drill down is also do we need to have a privilege or uh, anybody who has the access to the dashboard should be able to view like a payable invoice or receivable invoice or payment or something like that. no we have uh, access so this is oh privilege uh, this, for the drill yeah, down privilege. oh okay. yeah we have, we have this privilege so i have given this privilege to this thing this particular role that is general accountant uh, comes with uh, this privilege in current analyze so if you, if we are customizing it so probably we might want to give this uh, privilege to this in current analyze balance okay got it Okay, so this is about uh, the period close uh, dashboard. Okay, and uh, then the general accounting dashboard. So the account inspector, which we saw just now. So this is something like an uh, view page wherein I can see uh, account balance and I can drill down to the multiple level. So that is one thing and account monitor so account monitor and account inspector does the same thing so only difference that i could say is that so account monitor will give you information in the dashboard so here if you see so i have my cost center i have my products and i also will have my actual balances populated here so if at all there is any change so that will be given here. So if I want to probably drill down or I want to drill down, so I can just simply click this and see the information. So now the drill down works the same way. So it's the only uh, the dashboard that shows this information. But in case of uh, account inspector, specifically I'll have to navigate and then uh, get the information. This one, inquire and analyze balance. But whereas account monitor, this is kind of a monitor wherein it will be shown in the dashboard. So simply I can change uh, the parameter, uh, the period or the currency. So I can change and I can view the information, but the drill down works uh, in the same way. Okay. So now to create uh, the account monitor, so I have here option in the view. Okay. So here I, I have account group, so I can say create. OK, so I can give uh, the name. OK. And uh, then I can say this is for account monitor. OK. And uh, then here you see uh, three things. So one is that accounting period and uh, then the comparison option. OK, so whether I want to compare it with the uh, previous year or whether I want to compare it with the budget. Uh, so if I want to understand my budget versus actual, so I can say budget, okay, or if I want to understand from previous year to this year, so I can say, so it's basically will give me the change in the amount comparing with uh, either the budget or probably the uh, previous year, previous year or previous quarter, whatever the option that we are selecting, okay and uh, then the private so whether i wanted to have it in uh, private or public so private meaning that only uh, specific to this username honey dot uh, okay and public is uh, global which will be visible to all and shared is uh, between uh, the the uh, ledger so if if i have user uh, 
who has access to the India primary ledger. So we will be able to see if I have selected a sheet. OK, so I'm selecting this as private for now, which means this will be visible only to this user. OK, and uh, then I can give uh, my account code combination. So first thing is that I'll select uh, the ledger and then I can give multiple combination or I can select all. So let me give all account. Because I'm not sure which one uh, we used. So I'm giving all. But if you want to give a specific one, probably you can give it in specific. OK. Yeah, then you can see, uh, I mean, you can give the options. So always you want to display or when there is an increase or decrease you want to see. So you can see this option or you can set the threshold when the threshold is uh, equal to this or when the threshold is not this you want to display. You can set this information. OK, so once this is done, so you can say save and close. OK, so then uh, if you want to change the period, so you can change the period. So let's say I want to say 10. So I can say refresh. And I can see the changes. So since there is no change because uh, the debit and credit as I said, so it's equal. So will not have change. It is uh, the amount will be zero. So we'll have to uh, click this uh, to drill down and uh, then we will get the balances. I think uh, the period is this. Okay. OK, I think I gave the wrong company, so that's why because I wanted to give it for all, but somehow I selected only 103. So that's why it's not giving data. So let me try once again. Yeah, so now we have data. Yeah, we have this one transaction. Yeah, so as you can see, so the drill down part, it is same. So it's only about uh, the data, how we view the information. So whether we are seeing in the dashboard or we go to a specific page to inquire uh, the balance. OK, so this is about the account monitor and that is about the account inspector. So those are the uh, two things. OK. Yeah, so the next one that I have with me is budget. OK. Yeah, so we have time, right? We can see, uh, I mean, we can complete the budget. Can we do it next week uh, around budget and uh, uh, allocations? OK. Uh, let okay. me, uh, that's my thing. Uh, let me ask Lavanya and uh, Sandhya. I don't want it. Uh, if not, then I can view the recorded section. I can log up. I can view the recorded section. OK. Uh, Sandhya Lavanya, do you want to go ahead with the budget now or? Uh... Uh, yeah. 
I am also thinking like, can we do it on next to non-next class? It's absorbing is too much for me. I yeah. know that's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. The same thing with me. It can be tomorrow is also 